A very good afternoon to all. Today we are going to discuss biological classification. Before we proceed with the lecture, let's take a pre-reading question and the question says, which of the following characters belong to the kingdom Protista? Option 1 is prokaryotic, option 2 is multicellular, option 3 is all member have cell wall, option 4 is presence of nuclear membrane. Question is asking which of the following characters belong to kingdom Protista? We know that the kingdom protesta consists of unicellular eukaryotes. And option one is saying prokaryotic. So it won't be the correct answer because protesta they include unicellular eukaryotes. Multicellular, no, they are unicellular. All members have cell wall. In protesta, some members have cell wall. Luglina is a protest and it does not have a cell wall. It has a protein layer and the name of the protein layer is pallicle. Remember this that not all the members of the protest, they have cell wall. Only some members have cell wall. Post says, presence of nuclear membrane. We know that protest, they are eukaryotes, right? And all eukaryotes, they have a well-defined nucleus. Well-defined nucleus means that there's a presence of nuclear membrane. So the question is asking which of the following character belong to the kingdom protesta. The correct option is option number four, which is presence of nuclear membrane. Now let's proceed with the biological classification. Bio means living and classification is the grouping of organism into certain categories on the basis of their characteristics, okay? And the first scientific attempt for the classification was done by Aristotle. Aristotle classification was based on the morphological character. Or morphology. So he classified the organism into plants and animals. Plants, they are further classified into trees, shrubs, and herbs. Animals, they are grouped into anima or enema. Anima, which does not have red blood. Because A means absent, so they does not have red blood. Enema which have red blood. So the first scientific attempt for classification was done by Aristotle. Next is two kingdom classification. Two kingdom classification was given by Linnaeus. And Linnaeus divided the organism into two kingdoms. One is plantae and the other one is animalia. So the basis of the two kingdom classification was the presence or absence of cell wall. So those organisms which have cell wall, they are placed under the kingdom plantae and those organisms which does not have cell wall, they are placed under the kingdom animalia. 
so plantae kingdom includes bacteria fungi algae bryophytes or mosses ferns or pteridophyte gymnosperms and angiosperms because according to linnaeus the bacteria fungi algae bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms they all contains the cell wall so they are placed under the kingdom plantae and the organism which does not have cell wall they are placed under the kingdom animalia so animalia includes invertebrates and vertebrates but there are certain demerits of this two kingdom classification one demerit number one demerit is that we know that bacteria is prokaryotes and fungi algae bryophyte pteridophyte gymnosperm angiosperm they all are eukaryotes so this kingdom couldn't differentiate between the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes so this is the first demerit second demerit is we know that fungi they are non photosynthetic they are heterotrophic in nature whereas algae bryophytes pseudophytes gymnosperm angiosperm they all are photosynthetic in nature so the two kingdom classification couldn't differentiate between the photosynthetic and non photosynthetic organism so this is the second demerit we know that bacteria they are unicellular fungi algae bryo pteridophyte gymnosperm they all are multicellular organism so this kingdom it couldn't differentiate between the unicellular and multicellular organism so these are the three demerits or the disadvantage of the two kingdom classification which was proposed by carlus linnaeus moving next is a three kingdom classification three kingdom classification was proposed by hacker and the three kingdom includes plantae animalia and the new kingdom which is protista so one b merit is resolved which is that unicellular are separated from multicellular in the three kingdom classification but the plantae they still includes bacteria and fungi and bacteria they are prokaryotes right so this three kingdom classification it couldn't differentiate between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes organism and the fungi it still kept in the kingdom plantae whereas the fungi is a non photosynthetic so these are the two demerits of the three kingdom classification next one is the four kingdom classification four kingdom classification was proposed by copland and here one demerit is resolved that is the prokaryotes are placed in a separate kingdom which is monera so here the prokaryotes are separated from eukaryote but the demerit is that the fungi are still kept in the kingdom plantae and generally the plantae kingdom they consist of algae bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperm and angiosperm and they all are photosynthetic in nature but fungi is also kept in the kingdom plantae according to the four kingdom classification and the fungi they are non photosynthetic in nature so this is the demerit of four kingdom classification next one is the five kingdom classification which was proposed by rh whitaker and it's very important because it is the most accepted classification rh whitaker he grouped the organism into five kingdom there's monera which includes prokaryotes protista which includes unicellular eukaryote fungi which includes here you can see the fungi is given a separate kingdom so the problem 
which was uh, taking place in the four kingdom classification that the fungi was placed under the kingdom plantae was resolved in the five kingdom classification because in five kingdom classification the fungi is given a separate position or a separate kingdom fourth kingdom plantae and the fifth is animalia the main criteria of classification used by r h whitaker is the cell structure body organization mode of nutrition reproduction and phylogenetic relationship remember this it's very important these are the characteristics which are used by the rh whitaker for the classification of the five kingdom first is cell type monera includes prokaryotes protista fungi plantae animalia they all are eukaryotes second character is cell wall prokaryotes they have non cellulosic cell wall non cellulosic because their cell wall does not contain the cellulose component in prokaryote the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan peptidoglycan which consists of proteins plus sugar cell wall in protista present in some member remember this that not all the members of protista they have cell wall only few members they have cell wall the cell wall which are found in fungi they are made up of chitin and chitin is a polymer and the monomeric unit of chitin is nag remember this is very important the cell wall which is present in plantae that's cellulosic in nature because the main component is cellulose and in animals the cell wall is absent next one is nuclear membrane we know that the nuclear membrane in monera is absent because monera they consist of prokaryotes and the prokaryotes they do not have a well defined nucleus because there is an absence of nuclear membrane so nuclear membrane they are absent in prokaryotic and the all the eukaryotes they have a well defined nucleus that means there is a presence of nuclear membrane so protist fungi plantae animalia they all have nuclear membrane next character is the body organization because monera consist of prokaryotes and prokaryotes they are unicellular in nature so their body organization is cellular protista they are you consist of unicellular eukaryotes so their body organization is also cellular fungi they are multicellular and they have loose tissue plantae they have tissues and organ animalia they have tissue organ and organ system this is these are the body organization of the five kingdom next one next character is the mode of nutrition there are two type of mode of nutrition number one is autotrophic that means the organism they can synthesize their own food it could be photosynthetic or chemosynthetic the second one is heterotrophic that means the organism will depends upon the other for their food it could be saprotrophic or parasitic saprotrophic that the organism are feeding on the dead and decaying organic matter parasitic that means the organism is feeding on the living organism or, or derive the nutrition from the living organism that is known as parasitic now let's look at the kingdom mode of nutrition in case of monera and monera consist of prokaryotic remember this that monera the monera they consist of prokaryotic that means bacteria and the bacteria they show high diversity of high diversity in mode of nutrition
that bacteria could be autotrophic and they could be heterotrophic they could be chemosynthetic or they can be photosynthetic and in case of heterotrophic they could be saprophytic they can be parasitic or they can be decomposers okay because the bacteria they show a variety or the diversity in their mode of nutrition so generally the bacteria they are complex in behavior protista they are unicellular eukaryotes they show phototrophic and heterotrophic fungi they are heterotrophic in nature remember this they can either be saprotrophic or parasitic plantae they perform photosynthesis they are autotrophic in nature animalia they are heterotrophic now let's discuss the kingdom monera monera includes the sole member of monera are bacteria so jnv kolapur quickly answer me through chat box chat box what the membrane of bacteria is made up of dash quickly answer through chat box just now i told you remember this that the bacterial cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan and peptidoglycan consists of two unit nag and nam n acetyl muranic acid and n acetyl glucosamine remember this and the bacteria they are present everywhere whether it's soil water air they are present everywhere they are cosmopolitan and hundreds of bacteria are present in a handful of soil the bacteria they can live in extreme habitat and those bacteria are known as archibacteria which live in the harsh condition or the extreme habitat i told you that bacteria they are unicellular in nature because they are unicellular so they have a very simple structure so bacteria structure is very simple because they are very unicellular they don't have any complexity like we are eukaryotes the eukaryotes they are more complex than prokaryotes and they are complex in behavior though the bacteria they are simple in structure because they are unicellular but they show complex behavior and why they show complex behavior because they show diversity in the mode of nutrition because they could be photosynthetic autotrophs the bacteria they could be autotroph that means they can synthesize their own food or they can be heterotroph that means they depend upon other organism for their food okay and in autotroph the bacteria could be two it can be photosynthetic autotroph and it could be chemosynthetic if i say photosynthetic that means that bacteria are performing photosynthesis like cyanobacteria cyanobacteria the other name of cyanobacteria is blue green algae and they perform and these cyanobacteria they contain a pigment which is known as chlorophyll a because of this chlorophyll a they are able to perform photosynthesis so they are 
photosynthetic autotroph whereas chemosynthetic are those bacteria which can synthesize their own food but by using an inorganic substrate as their source of energy they use inorganic substrate it could be nitrate it could be nitrite it could be ammonia and the example of chemosynthetic autotrophs are nitrifying bacteria which are involved in nitrogen fixation like nitrosomas nitrococcus nitrobacter these are the nitrifying bacteria and these are the example of chemosynthetic autotroph remember this that is why we say that the bacteria they show complex behavior next one is archaea bacteria the bacteria which can survive in harsh conditions or extreme conditions like high temperature high salt conditions those bacteria are archaea bacteria they are different from the u bacteria which are the true bacteria and why because they have a difference in their cell wall structure the cell wall structure of archaea bacteria differ from the u bacteria which is a true bacteria and because of the difference in their cell wall structure these archaea bacteria are able to survive in a very harsh conditions so those bacteria which are found in hot springs are known as thermoacidophiles thermo is for temperature acido is is for acidic so those organism which are those bacteria which are found in hot springs are known as thermoacidophiles those who are found in salty areas are known as halophiles and those are found in marshy areas are known as methanogens methanogens are also present in the gut of animals and they are also involved in the production of methane and methane is one of the component of biogas remember this that archaea bacteria differ from u bacteria because their cell structure is different it's important okay remember this next one is u bacteria u bacteria are the true bacteria because they have a rigid cell wall so these are the true bacteria example of u bacteria cyanobacteria we also call it as blue green algae and these cyanobacteria they have chlorophyll a pigment which is similar to green plants so they are photosynthetic autotroph just now i have told you that cyanobacteria they are photosynthetic autotroph because they perform photosynthesis because they have a pigment which is the chlorophyll a okay can anybody tell me that we know that the prokaryotes they does not have a membrane bound organism that means they don't have chloroplast so where this chlorophyll a or the pigment molecules are present in bacteria name that structure you can answer me through chat box we know that the prokaryotes they does not have membrane bound organelles they don't have chloroplast they don't have mitochondria they don't have golgi endoplasmic reticulum they don't have membrane bound organelles so where this is chlorophyll or the pigment molecules are present in bacteria okay let me tell you they have a special structure which are known as chromatophore remember this it's important so the pigment molecules are present in these structure which are chromatophore and cyanobacteria they are unicellular they have single cell they can be colonial they can be filamentous as you can see this is nostoc and nostoc and anabena they are the example of cyanobacteria and this is a filamentous blue green algae this nostoc and anabena they have heterocyst one important function of heterocyst is in nitrogen fixation 
they fix the atmospheric nitrogen okay remember the cell heterocyst its function is involved in nitrogen fixation and this heterocyst cell they have a very thick covering if i draw it here this is a one heterocyst cells and they have a very thick covering the cell wall they are very thick walled and why it is thick wall because the enzymes which are involved in nitrogen fixation they does not uh, they are very sensitive to oxygen okay so the heterocyst are thick wall so that the oxygen from the outside does not diffused in the cell because they have to create the anaerobic condition in the cells because the enzymes which are involved in nitrogen fixation they are oxygen sensitive that is why the heterocyst cell they are thick wall and these nostoc they have a mucilaginous sheath around these colonies and this i have already told you that chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria are present and these chemosynthetic uh, autotroph bacteria they use inorganic substrate as the source of energy these are example of the chemosynthetic autotrophs are nitrifying bacteria which are involved in nitrogen fixation and these chemosynthetic autotroph they also play a very important role in recycling of nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus iron and sulfur remember this we know that the bacteria they show diversity of metabolism or they show diversity in the mode of nutrition right but majority of the bacteria they are heterotrophic in nature that means they cannot synthesize their own food they are dependent on other for their food so they are heterotrophic in nature and majority of they are decomposers and they are good bacteria also and they are bad bacteria also good bacteria example are lactobacillus they are these lactobacillus they are present in curd they these are the bacteria which are responsible for making curd from the milk so if you are eating curd that means you are consuming the lactobacillus because these are the bacteria which are involved in making curd from milk bacteria are also involved in making antibiotic like antibiotics are produced from many bacteria like streptomyces bacteria they also help in nitrogen fixation in legume roots rhizobium is a bacteria which help in nitrogen fixation in the roots of leguminous plant and they are bad bacteria which are pathogenic in nature which causes disease in they can cause disease in human beings they can cause in disease in plants animals pets and the diseases are all like chorella typhoid tetanus citrus canker these are the well known diseases which are caused by different bacteria and the bacteria they divide by fission or we also call it as binary fission binary means two fission means divide if this is a parent cell it will divide and it will produce two daughter cells so this is what we call binary fission it's a type of asexual reproduction and they also reproduce by sort of sexual reproduction by adopting a primitive type of dna transfer from one bacteria to another through conjugation and mycoplasma in the starting i told you that all the bacteria they have cell wall and the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan but there is one bacteria which is mycoplasma which does not have a cell wall remember this it's very important point mycoplasma does not have cell wall they are pathogenic to both plants and animals that means they cause disease in plants as well as in animal they can survive without oxygen they does not require oxygen and another important point is that another name of mycoplasma is ppl low 
PPLO means pleuro pneumonia like organisms and they are also known as joker of the cell why they are called joker because they does not have cell wall right so they can acquire any shape that is why we call that mycoplasma they are also known as the joker of the cell next we are going to discuss our protist protist they includes include single cell eukaryotes they are primarily aquatic and protist include chrysophytes dinoflagellates lugniodes slime molds protozoa they all come under the kingdom protist and the protist some have flagella or cilia cilia example of cilia is paramecium the cilia they they are present in many number like in thousands of number and they are present around the cell or around the surface of the bacteria they are smaller in size as compared to flagella and they work like ore ore means chappu for example if it's a boat this person is holding a ore this is what we call ore so the cilia they function like ore when all the cilia they beat in the same direction if they beat in the same direction just like ore when we move the ore in the same direction then the boat move forward similarly when the cilia they beat in the same direction the cell move forward and the flagella they are they are not present on the entire body they are few in numbers okay remember this and they are larger in size as compared to cilia the protist they can reproduce asexually and sexually also by involving the cell fusion and zygote formation the first under protist we are going to discuss is chrysophytes chrysophytes include diatoms and golden algae another name of golden algae are desmids diatoms they are the chief producers they are the chief producers in the ocean why they are the producers because they are photosynthetic in nature okay that is why they synthesize the food food in a very large amount that is why we we call diatoms as the chief producer of the ocean remember this important and the cell wall in diatoms they form a soap box like pattern like this this is a soap box this is a box and this is a lid of the box so the di diatom cell wall they show a soap box pattern and the cell wall of diatom they have silica remember this important and because the silica are present in the cell wall the cell wall they are indestructible and when thousands of uh, diatoms die these cell wall they keep on deposited in the bed of the ocean and this accumulation over billion years they form a diatomaceous earth and this diatomaceous earth is used in polishing and filtration of oil and syrup they help in the polishing that is improve the texture filtration of the oil and syrup in please remember this diatomaceous earth please remember the soap box please remember that the cell they have silica please remember that the soil is involved in polishing and filtration of oil and syrup and the chief producers these points are important next we are going to discuss dinoflagellates dinoflagellates they are mostly marine and photosynthetic in nature they can be of different colors like yellow green brown blue red depending upon the pigment present in their cell 
as in the picture you can see there is a red color this red color sea is known as red tide and is because of the red dinoflagellates example is gone ilex when this red dinoflagellates they divide rapidly and produce in large number so the sea appear red and this red color sea is known as red tide but when these dinoflagellates they divide and they produce a large number they also release the toxin in large number and these toxins they may kill the other animals which are present in the sea or ocean like fishes and the dinoflagellates they have two flagella one is longitudinal and another one is transverse you can see this this one is longitudinal and the transfer is present in the furrow between the cell or cellulose plate this is the furrow this gap this is the furrow i'm drawing it with the white color so it will be visible this is the transfer flagella because it present transversely between the plates in the furrow i hope it is clear now that where the transfer flagella is present and the cell wall they have a stiff cellulose plates these are the stiff cellulose plate please remember this characteristic of dinoflagellate that they have stiff cellulose plate they have two flagella one lies longitudinally other lies transversely they are red dinoflagellate example is gone alex they when they undergo rapid multiplication they give they make the sea red and we also call it as red tide and the toxin is released by the large number when they are present in large number they release a toxin which is harmful for the other organisms or the other aquatic organism which are present in the water okay remember all these points these are important now let's come to concept check question says that chrysophytes lugniod dinoflagellate slime molds are included in the kingdom option 1 is monera option 2 is protista option 3 is fungi option 4 is animalia quickly answer everybody what you think what will be the correct option for this question very good jn vinal gonda what about others quickly answer Question is saying that chrysophytes, lugniods, dinoflagellates, slime molds, protozoa—they all are belong to kingdom Protista. Remember this: Monera includes prokaryotes or bacteria. Fungi includes all the fungi. Animalia will includes animals. now we are going to wind up the class if you have any doubts please let me know thank you all for your participation Thank you all see you in the next class and have a nice day